Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, yeah. This is weird life. It is. So I think so. I hope so. All yes. right. Ready to go. It's not working. Good. So hello there, folks. Um, so we're back again for another episode of Virtual Cast. It's episode number six. Uh, yesterday we did uh, our top 10 games of 2018. And today we're going to talk about the top 10 games uh, of 2019 or most anticipated. I mean, we haven't played them yet. Ones that we haven't played. Uh, but um, yeah, b- before we jump into that, hello there, folks. I am Ilya. I'm Kyle. Good. So at least some people know who we are. And uh, before we go to a uh, topic of the day, which is anticipated games, we're going to talk about some recent plays. So because (laughs) uh, the last episode was yesterday, so there wasn't much to, to you know, there wasn't much new stuff I could play. That's true. You know, in 24 (laughs) hours. But I still did play um, a new... uh, episodes of Scythe campaign. Okay. I think they call them episodes. So basically, I got the second game of Rise of Fenris campaign. And that was... Uh, the second game was faster, first of all. Uh, we were missing one person. We played five-player game first, and then we... Now we play four-player game because one person couldn't get it, uh, couldn't get to play. But... Uh, the new, the second play of Scythe was smooth. Uh, we were, you know, less war, more peace type people. And I feel like it was still more like an introduction. It was still like just starting to go on. And now for the third episode, we got some new cool stuff. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to spoil Good. that. And I feel like, oh, this is getting exciting now. This is getting really exciting. So, yeah, a very nice play. I still liked it a lot. I won. I won. So, mm-hmm. because uh, another <laughs> opponent rushed the game. He was like, ah, I'm going to rush the game so you won't get more points. But then I, eventually I still won. <laughs> That's there it. you go. So, Scythe, still great. Uh, Rise of Henry's campaign so far. So good. So, okay. what's your recent play? Well, let's see. So, looking at what I played yesterday, I um, played... City of Gears last night. Mm-hmm. I played it before, but it's a fun little game. You've got this board, and it has nine in two players. It's got nine tiles, and you're sort of building this network of connections so that you can move through and eventually try and have control over these different areas and have access to their special abilities. You've got cute little robots. You've got these nice plastic gears you're pulling out of a bag. Uh, there's a large juggernaut robot that can move through and stomp things but there's probably 30 tiles in the box and you only use nine of them in a game and i think i have 50 gears and you only use 40 of them so there's a lot of variance there and it's it's a fun little game it's not long it's not hard turns are pretty fast i've only ever played it with two not sure if i would love it with more because i think that just might add more time but as a two-player game Mm -hmm. it works wonderfully all right that's something I, I wanted to try as well. It um, was in the Dice Throw Essential for uh, well, a period of time. Well, it was, it was announced as the second game of the Dice Tower Essentials line, but something happened and it didn't come out as part of that. Maybe it wasn't ready in, in time. I don't know. But it's been independently published. Well, not independently. It's been published by Gray Fox Games. And it's, it's a fine little game. Good. Maybe I'll try it someday. Uh, I was excited about this one a long time ago, but then my excitement went away. <laughs> All right. Um, also, uh, there are, I, I haven't played anything else in twenty four hours, no. last twenty four hours. But uh, let's say let's say if we think about the cruise and see what we have played on uh, on the cruise. There are oh, where okay. many games. Uh, let me mention uh, another play that we did, and uh, one of those plays. Uh, was Combo Fighter. I don't know if I talked about Combo Fighter uh, before, uh, but uh, Combo Fighter is a fighting game which uses the Rock, Paper, Scissors uh, mechanic. And um, basically you have the blue, you have the red, and then you have the yellow cards, so the blue beats uh, red or something like that. 
one or the other way. I think blue beats red and red beats yellow, yellow beats blue. And you choose the cards simultaneously, put them on, on the table, a reveal, and whoever wins the round can do a combo. And you can do e either the special combo that's basically written on your player sheet, or you can do a basic combo by following the symbols on those cards. So the first card you play, there are symbols on the left uh, and like different shapes. And if you have the cards with that symbol, you can play it. And then the next card, you can play it again if you have the symbol of the previous card. So and so on. You can uh, kind of create combinations and then you can do more damage. And it's all about just damaging each other and trying to <clears throat> get the deck of cards erased. So your, your deck of cards that you use to fight are your life points as well. It's extremely fast, uh, it's extremely engaging. Uh, you Maybe it's like 20 minutes at most. And then you can do another fight and another fight. And I like the A and B sides of the fighters. Like um, there's the A side of that fighter. He has kind of a, some kind of ability. Sometimes it's not a good one or nothing special. But if you can do whatever thing it says and it flips to the B side, it's extremely powerful or something like mm -hmm. that. You know, some are more balanced. So the fighters are very different. They are asymmetric, although the rock, paper, scissors mechanic is, you know, overall for all the fighters. But I like this kind of a small, sparkling tension in this game. And that's a really, really cool game about outguessing, outsmarting. like it very much. Yeah, and that's I played uh, it. Combo Fighter. I played, I played it at Gen Con. There was the, they had the demo there. And it's, it's not quite out yet, but I'm really excited for it to, uh, to finally find its way to me. Because I played it there and then went right online and ordered one. So I'm excited for oh. this one. There, there was a copy uh, in um, yeah, there's a couple in the library. Of early copies out, but it's not it's not available yet. So I'm ex so I'm excited for it once it becomes available. Yeah, I I played with Peter Wogan from Breaking Games, so okay, uh, that's that, that was a lot of fun. We played like four right. times. Okay. Well, Your next my my second recent play is also one from last night. We were sitting around, we had a few minutes, and we decided to pull out something older, and so I got out Targi. I don't know if you've played Targi. It's a two-player game. You've got this sort of a you build a frame out of out of cards, and then you're you're placing your figures on these various actions. You've got three figures you place, and based on where you play them, it will form one or two intersections, and you put other uh, tokens on those intersections, which are cards that you can then claim. You're then building a grid of uh, of twelve cards, and you're trying to get combinations that are going to be worth extra points. Some of these cards are worth special abilities. It's pretty fast. It's just it's just for two. There's an expansion that's out, but it's only available in German, so I, I haven't acquired it yet because although I can handle German, I doubt anybody else that around here would, would want to play it if it were in German. So it was it's I don't know, I I enjoyed it. I hadn't played it for a while. It was a, a pleasant surprise uh, from the fair I don't know, I can't remember when it came out, but it's been several years. Um... It's been a long time, so I'm. I was. I was just as enamored with it as I was back in the day. Uh, I wouldn't say it's 2004. No, I, it's not. Well, it's not, not that, that old. old. Uh, it's something 2010 or something like that. If only there were some way we could figure this out. Uh, yeah, 12, 12. Uh, there you go. <laughs> it's All still right. a good long time, but I had a. I had a fun time with Targi. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, at some point when I. Started playing all of these Cosmos two-player games. Uh, we started, you know, collecting, and you know that uh, you you helped us with mm -hmm. some of these copies to find some of these copies. And these are very smart games. And Targi is one of the best, if not the best, one in the line, in my opinion. The Heron Zeus is also, or Th Thunder Lightning was the was the reprint for that. Uh, it was also really cool. But Targi, yeah, I like it. Uh, I like the kind of worker placement intersection type thing in it so why not but mm -hmm. i feel like it could have been language independent maybe on the other hand i do understand the you know it needs text but on the other hand maybe it could have been language independent that would solve the problem well, the expansion i don't know i mean ma many of the things are but there are some that just require text and there'd really be no easy way to convey some of the different thing uh, concepts with symbols so i don't know i i, I I wish that the German expansion would be printed in English so that I can 
play it and give it a try too. I read the rules and it seems like it'd be kind of interesting, but whatever. Yeah. For now, I've got regular old Targi. Yeah. And I hope they will maybe just go through the Cosmos two player series games and reprint maybe not all of them or revise and, and reprint them, you know, just, just, just get back to the old, you know, Why I'd not? be okay with just this expansion. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I want to see. I want to see those old, older games getting reprinted and maybe revised, because they were really good, but just with some issues. Oh, right. okay. So let's go to the next segment, and that's desired play, and that's about the games that we really want to get to the table. Maybe because we haven't gotten to play them yet. This they, they aren't played, or um, we play them a long time ago, or for whatever reason, we, we just want to play them. In okay. The... Now, my pick for that is a cooperative game called Spirit Island. Mm. And that's why, because I, I got this uh, game uh, some time ago, and um, I, I have quite a few unplayed games, but I really want to get Spirit Island to the table because, I'm, first of all, I think that this cooperative nature and the theme of the game and the looks of the game will really appeal to my colleagues from Merck. And some of them really like co-ops. And on the other hand, I really want to play a good co-op uh, once in a while. <laughs> I, I, I haven't played co-ops um, really lately, you know. So maybe I mean, like some of them, let's say Detective or Chronicles of Crime, you know, these are kind of a, uh, deduction style things, you know, and Unlock and Escape Room games, let, let them be. But something which is like meaty, like, you know, like Robinson Crusoe, something like that, you know, uh, that's what I want to get from that game. And I'm hoping for a great game. I really want to get this to the table as soon as possible. I was already about to get it to the table today. But we <laughs> still decided to go with the Scythe campaign because uh, it takes well, more time. you know, you've already started something, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, well, you, you know my thoughts on Spirit Island. It's, it's easy. It's, it, it goes in and out of my top 10, and it's always in the top 20 of, of just generally all time. Mm -hmm. So I really, really like the game. I'm always looking forward to a chance to play it. I probably played it 20, 25 times last year. And I would love to play it some more, so I can definitely support that. You should have told me you wanted it on the cruise. <laughs> I saw it, like, I saw it being played, but you know there we are so many games out there. The yeah, we we played Betrayal Legacy. That's maybe I I would have played it if we wouldn't play Betrayal Legacy. But no, no well, maybe. So, what's okay. your desired play? Well, my desired play is a game that just showed up today. And I had forgotten it. You know, I'm sort of a Kickstarter demon. And I back things there and don't really think about them. But this is the reprint of Claustrophobia. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it was on Kickstarter at the very end of last year. But it was really just a pre-sale. Um, I have the old original Claustrophobia still. I always, I enjoyed that game. I haven't played it forever. In fact, I bought some expansions that I never played. And this is a, a sort of a, it's a two player game, a head to head game. One person is sort of, but it's almost like a two player dungeon crawl type game. One mm -hmm. person is controlling the forces of evil and is sort of, is, is trying to overwhelm the heroes. And the other person is these heroes. And it, it's an interesting little game where you'll, all of the actions are activated by dice. And so, for example, the heroes have six rows and you'll roll dice and you'll put an action in the row that's going to be assigned to that hero that turn and mm -hmm. that gives his stats his movement his attack his defense hmm, and if nice. you get wounded then you have to put a wound there and you can't use that row anymore and so if you get to the point where you don't have a die that's for an unwounded row well that hero just doesn't do anything that turn so it's sort of a war of attrition as the evil player is trying to overwhelm the heroes meanwhile the he the the, the demon player has I think it has it has these two it has a I think it can use its demons twice it has an unlimited uh, army of grunts but it but the, the the bigger characters can only be deployed twice once they've been killed twice they're gone and so the there's a bit of attrition going on there but they play very differently the two different sides and I remember really enjoying it I think it's a a good little two player game I think it takes up a lot of space I haven't even opened my new copy yet it literally just arrived uh, to the office today, 
but I'm really excited to kind of dust it off and, and get it out and see if I enjoy it as much as the old version mm-hmm. or whether the old version, which has some expansions, uh, stands the test of time in even in the place of a new uh, new copy of the game. So Let's hope for the new one. Well, let's hope for both. <laughs> because it's, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's reprinted, so I hope you, you will enjoy the new one as much as you enjoy the old one. So you can basically. And I, I don't even know it. what's changed. I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to see if anything's changed. Mm-hmm. The one thing I do like about the old one, though, is that the figures were painted, and I don't think they are in the new one. I think they're just ugly gray plastic in the new one. Mm-hmm. All so, right. But we'll see. Uh, yeah. I'll have to uh, report back on that one in the future. Yeah, and that's claustrophobia, the new edition. Yep. Oh that right. Sixteen forty nine or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Sixteen forty three. Oh, good. So, but now let's go to another segment, and that's the segment called Guess That Game. And uh, let me start with okay. uh, with our little game. And first of all, just for those who probably don't know or haven't watched the previous episode, Guess That Game. <laughs> um, I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna tell each other uh, some hints about the game we guessed and. The other person must guess that game and you can play with us on the chat or if you're watching this offline after the uh, the episode that has aired you can still try to guess as we give hints and see if you were right but all right let's start with the first guess that game and this is a worker placement game <laughs> is it agricola no. <laughs> oh, okay. At least something. Um, it has powerful technologies. At least in my opinion. With powerful technologies. Yeah, basically. Something like that. I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need another hint there. Oh right. Um, the worker spots that are there. Um, they might and will disappear eventually. Is this uh, Atlantis Rising? Oh, yes, it is. Okay. You're right. My four would be nautical theme, kind of. Oh, <laughs> oh, you guessed it. Well, yeah, all right. I haven't played that game in forever. I have it in my closet, but... It's because they are, like, I wanted to mention this one because the new edition is coming, so... That's true. Uh, with Vincent Tray art and revised rules, so I'm looking forward to that one, the new edition. It's not on my All anticipated right. list, though. All right. <laughs> okay. Spoilers. Whoops. All right. Are you ready for mine? Yes. Mine is a cooperative game. It's um, it's Spyfall. <laughs> that is not a cooperative game. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of. <laughs> no, it's not Spyfall. Yeah. Mine has a historical theme. Oh, um, Freedom, the Underground Railroad. Well, that's a very wild guess, but yes, that, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I was thinking about what historical themed uh, cooperative game I, oh. games I know, and that's the only one. <laughs> oh, well, I think well. so. But okay. Where, are there any others that are historical and cooperative? Uh, there probably oh. are. I, I didn't think of hints for every game, I only thought of the ones for this one. Hmm. So <laughs> that's good. Anyway, ah, I got it. I got it. So go. Uh, let's go to my next one. And uh, this game has auction mechanic. Is it Keyflower? No. Um, <laughs> uh, in this game, you score points uh, and bonuses. As you do the action, what you do. Okay, that's a lot of games. I'm afraid I'll need another one. Yes, uh, it's a tile laying game. Mm. Nope, keep going. Uh, you can build however you want. Tile laying. Is this Mad King Ludwig? Yes. All right. That's the one. Castles of Mad King Ludwig. There we go. Yeah. Good. All so, right. your next game? Okay. 
this is a well, fairly heavy Euro game. Hmm. Fairly heavy uh, Euro game. Uh, all of them. <laughs> Let's go. Here. This game involves moving workers around a circular track and they can never go back. Glenmore? No. Huh. This game has you placing tiles on the dark and light sides of a field. Dark and light sides of the field. Uh, what? I don't know. This game has a pun in its title. Uh, <laughs> may, I don't know. This game is about beer, sort of. Oh, the um, the beer crafters, brew crafters. Nope, not brew crafters. Um, beer, beer empire. This game also has a monastery theme. Oh, um, it's it's not Carcassonne. It's like Isle of Sky, no. something like that. No, 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 no. It's uh, you give up. I'm out of hints. Ah, <laughs> uh, gosh, monastery theme. Where do you and die when you go? Where do you go when you die if you've been good? Heaven and Nail. There you go. I've never played Heaven and Nail. I don't know how it looks. Oh, okay. Huh. I don't know that game at all. <laughs> I That's why it wasn't obscure. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I know I know I know there's that game that the the, the game called Heaven and Nail exists, but I know it nothing about this one. Nominated for one of the for one of the Spiel des Jahres awards this oh. year, so it's not too obscure. Yeah. Yeah. I just. <laughs> Didn't get Lest to it, I probably. be accused of picking a game that nobody would ever know. <laughs> <laughs> I All think right. you you got it, you got it. That's that's, that's a good pick. I just didn't just do well. It. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you oh, haven't played it, right. so there you go. But we are done with the guess that game segment, and let's just go straight to our top ten most anticipated games of 2019. Our topic of the day. And uh, let me say about the, my list. So, <laughs> because so 2018 and also 2019. Now um, I haven't really bought many games. Uh, but I was in Chenkin, of course. That's that's the only thing where I bought more games. So, but but basically, I started buying less games, and I'm not really buying any games nowadays. And not even neither am I. Yeah, no, no, even backing a Kickstarter. Neither am I. Neither yeah. am I. Yes, I did three today. <laughs> and uh. also, that's where that's why I kind of um, I, I didn't go to Essen as well. That's where I kind of a uh, have a you know plot hole uh, in uh, in my uh, in my story of um, of uh, learning about games because I just I, I don't know. I'm just not. I didn't know about like new games that are coming out in 2019. I knew nothing basically. I knew about just a few games, you know, just a few. But really, I don't know anything about this year except I, the 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 one that I did right now by doing that list, the the research, okay. let's say. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just I'm yeah. totally. It was really hard well, for me to do the list. Well, I had a hard time keeping it to 10. Um, you know, I, I easily came up with a list of 20 things that I'm excited about. I, I tried to keep it not just the, these are the Kickstarters that I backed in the last six month list. Um, although, you know, having not played, I've, I've played only one of these games, although I've played a version of another one. Um, actually, I guess I've, I, I have some experience with at least three of them. Mm -hmm. And I know they're going to be great. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, the number 11 that I'm not going to talk about because it hasn't been announced is Summoner Wars 10th Anniversary Edition. But that's going to be amazing. Uh, but it's not on my list. And the reason it's not on my list is that I'm sure it's just Summoner Wars. <laughs> and it also <laughs> has not been announced. Uh, but you heard it here first. Um... <laughs> yeah. 
Anyway, so uh, also one small thing uh, to add is that I try to avoid my Kickstarter list. I yeah didn't completely, but I tried. I didn't. I didn't either. Because well, that makes sense though, because if those are games that you know are coming, and you obviously had some interest in them, so I think I have one, one, two games on here, three games on here that are from a Kickstarter that I did, mm -hmm. but. Um, the rest may or may not be through a Kickstarter at some point. I don't know. Yeah, I had but... two, uh, and I tried mm -hmm. to and tried to look at the games that are like there were some games that said that they're gonna go on Kickstarter in like in July, or whatever you know. And then there was like, uh, these are not 2019 releases. Mm -hmm. If they're gonna well, go mid year, they will not deliver before the end of the year. Well, one never knows. Surely. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, you know, we, we have no idea when these are actually gonna come out anyway. So, mm -hmm. but I tried to skip those that I knew that you know there was a little bit of information about when they're gonna mm -hmm. come out. If it was like the Kickstarter in 2019, I was like, um, I'd rather skip it because it <laughs> may not be out. Mm -hmm. Oh right, let's go to number ten. And number ten. So I I know very little about all of these games, so I just have a few descriptions about these games. So um, sure. my number ten is the game that. I was thinking about backing on Kickstarter, but I backed out basically because I was like, um, maybe I shouldn't get this game and see what happens with this game. And that's the Artemis Project, or, or Artemis Project. And Artemis, okay. um, A-R-T-E-M-I-S Project. And in this one, it's like a uh, dice placement and engine building game. Uh, that's, that's nice. I want to play more dice placement games because I, I went away from them at some points there were quite a few that i tried but then i was like um i don't want to play dice placement games anymore and now i'm like i'm getting back to that and in this one you are building stuff you were in some kind of a planet thing and you roll the dice and try to place them on different spots and block each other maybe you know fight for the spots with each other uh, but you have to also work together to go on expeditions and you will train your workers, so they will probably become better. I don't know much about this game, but yeah, it's it's uh, it sounds nice. It looks nice. The cover looks nice. Uh, that's our, the Artemis project number ten. All right, I know nothing about it, but that's probably going to be the case for most of these games. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my number ten, I am interested in mostly because of the designers, and that is Barrage. Oh, uh, yeah, I That's, consider that one. It's um, It came out on Kickstarter, but I missed that. So uh, it's, it's just going to be an off-the-shelf purchase for me. It's about hydroelectric power. And it's, I, I mean, I've, I've enjoyed most everything that Simone Luciani has done. So I would be really surprised if I don't, love, don't know much more about it than that, other than, you know, what, what I read in a few moments. But it's definitely one I always liked games by this particular designer so it's definitely on my list barrage number 10 oh right let's go to number nine now and uh, my number nine is a game that um is started to be the cooperative adventure story game kind of something like that and i mean i'm into story games and that's called secrets of the lost station and this is from everything epic games uh, though sounds epic <laughs> no I, I i hesitated because uh these are the ones that made um the com awards you know ah. the, the one that we didn't like that much so <laughs> but maybe this like and by I, that I'm not... much you mean not at all yeah <laughs> uh, but uh, um, i i don't want to you know i don't want to judge the uh, the company by one game maybe to do something different, something much better, you know? And uh, The Secrets of the Lost Station is a cooperative game of sci-fi, action-adventure, and exploration. And it's a unique secret se sequel to Secrets of the Lost Tom, uh, set thousands years into the future. So there will be like, as understood, there will be like a story-driven thing, and there will be characters that are, you know, like they might be some ancient characters, but they are in the new shape in the future, you know, something a little bit that fantasy, sci-fi fantasy feel to it. So why not? Um, maybe it's a really cool adventure story game. Or maybe it's just a blah. 
but I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for that. That secrets right. of the lost station number nine. Okay, no, nothing about it. Um, <laughs> me too. <laughs> uh, we'll have to wait and see. I might let you try that one and tell me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my number nine is a game that I've already played. Um, I did not play this version of it, though. Uh, This is Dice Throne Season 3. Oh. Mm -hmm. I have Dice Throne Season 1 and Season 2, and I've played Season 1 a bunch, and I played Season 2 a little bit. Uh, Really, I'm assuming it's just going to be a bunch more characters for Dice Throne, and even though that feels more like an expansion, it's technically standalone, so hey. Um, I I really enjoy Dice Throne as a two-player game. It's essentially a competitive head-to-head Yahtzee-style game with some card play where you're trying to upgrade your characters. I really enjoyed uh, everything I've seen, and I certainly think that Dice Throne Season 3 is going to be just as much fun as Seasons 1 and Season 2. Yeah, I, I started hearing more and more about Dice Throne. It's probably like I think the season one was just you know a smaller run, probably. yeah. It's, and well, then it's, it's it's from Roxley, and you like their stuff, yeah. So and Roxley Games has been you know rocking since, and maybe you know the Dice Throne itself wasn't such a big deal when they started this one, and probably by well, season three they already have a lot of hype about this game. Yeah, they they will. I hope that what they'll also do is is do an updated version of season one, be, so that it's because the season two comes in these nice game tray inserts that you sort of it's like cassettes that you can pull out and just hand to somebody to 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 unpack and play whereas the first one came in these trays that are open on the top that aren't quite as nice so i hope that as part of this they'll also upgrade season one to make it look the same as season two Mm -hmm. but even if they don't but i mean season one's perfectly playable and you can play it with season two i've done that already and i think season three is going to be great so you say that um I should try it. I think you should. I mean, it's a fast game. It's 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 not a heavy commitment. So, <laughs> oh right. So let's go to number eight now. And my number eight is a an economic city building game. It's a competitive city building game, though. Mm-hmm. But it, uh, I I saw it was had some economy and stuff like that. That's called Master Plan from Abba Games or Abba, whatever. Abba, like knowing you, knowing me. Yeah, <laughs> ABBA, ABBA, uh, and uh, no, that's the company. The uh, did, I don't know. They're the ones who did that uh, Justice League game. Yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the one that okay. you wanted. Yeah. And so, um, this one is the city building game where you, you know, you do different constructions uh, in the city and. Um, you can auction for new building plans, and you can construct, or you can use special abilities from neutral constructions, whatever buildings. And it's just another city building game. And when I looked at this one, it reminded me of you know of Quadropolis and Expand City and so on. So I was like, hmm, maybe, maybe it's good, maybe not. I'm always into you know lighter. It it feel <laughs> it felt like to be a lighter city building game. So I'm always into that. A bit economy, a little bit city building. Why not? <laughs> All right. No, again, that's my number eight, my plan. It, but... Yeah. All right. Well, my number eight is uh, we, we've got our uh, Croatian friend in here in the chat. My number eight is a game set in the city of Dubrovnik, Croatia. That's uh, back in the old name was called Ragusa, and that's the name of the game from uh, Capstone Games. I heard about I, that one. I don't know much about it, but I, you know, I having lived in Croatia for a couple of years. I have an affinity to that part of the world, and I'm, you know, I'm a sucker for something that speaks to my uh, senses. It looks like there's some worker placement in there. It looks like you're building up a wall as, uh, around the the city of Dubrovnik, and it uh, it looks like a very pretty game. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. This is one that's sort of from my Kickstarter list because I already signed up for the Kickstarter last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, it's it's one that I think will be a lot of fun. I usually like Capstone's things. I like most of their heavier games. Um, uh, Rorschifat and uh, Haspelknecht and, and those games. Uh, and I think this is going to fit nicely within that group. It's, it's obviously a Euro game, but it's definitely a gorgeous looking one. So hmm. All right. that's my uh, number eight, Ragusa. 
All right, let's go to my number seven. Uh, my number seven is from uh, friends from Board and Dice, and now oh, NSK and Games is also part of Board and Dice. So basically, they are merged companies, and that's Sierra West. And the cover for Sierra West looks really cool, looks pretty. really nice. Yeah, and I like the so the game has those overlaying cards, you know, uh, like the honcho type thing maybe, but you know, you're kind of building up your way up. And as you advance your pioneers, you will reveal more worker spots for yourself, as understood, something like that. So as building up the cards and going up, you will reveal more stuff. That just sounds nice. And just the whole thing about building cards and overlaying <laughs> them and, you know, maybe abandoning some spots and creating new spots. It's a nice way to play a game. So I don't know a lot about the game, but it has the it has modules or mods or something like that that you can put into the game as well and make the games different. Like one of the mods I see here is the boats and benches, something like that. You know, so you can basically customize your game a little bit with the mods that are gonna come in the game as okay. well. So that's that. That's Zero West number seven. Yeah, it looks pretty. I like you know games like that. So. Let's hope it's great. My number seven is a game from AEG. Should be coming out in the next couple months. Uh, this is uh, Tiny Towns. Uh, this is one where you're essentially, you've got a, I think it's a four by four grid, might be five mm -hmm. by five. And you, you sort of pick a color, you, on your turn you pick a color and everybody takes a cube of that color and puts it in, in the city. And then you're just trying to make the, the cubes come out in certain patterns so that you can then build a building and that clears cubes off. And the more you can do that, the more things you'll get into your into your little city and they score differently based upon the different buildings you're building. And you want to try and hold out for as long as possible, because if ever you can't play something on your turn, you're just done and then you're going to score a bunch of negative points. It looks really light, but it looks really fun. It looks like the kind of game I can probably play with just about anyone. It's brightly colored, which also speaks to me. Kind of a almost a bingo-esque vibe, but this is uh, my number seven, Tiny Towns. Uh, no, nothing about the game, but that's, that's probably uh, the hit song of our today's <laughs> podcast. Sure. No, nothing about the game. So, but let's go to number six. My number six is and you know i i started looking to more space themed games but you know it's it's more after you know that that terraforming mars and cosmo genesis you know, like more scientific stuff you know and more about n not 4x but something else beside that and this one is called exploration and in exploration you take the you're basically a corporation, you're, you know, dispatching expeditions, collecting resources, modifying the designs, developing new technologies, then competing with each other, sabotaging each other's missions, and just sounds interesting, you know, the exploration itself, where you try to build up in space while trying to <laughs> stop the other people and do the missions, and sounds more like, you know, the passive aggressive way of that thing you're sabotaging and you know not just going oh. with a ship and killing each other you know <laughs> okay so it looked it looked Much nice nicer. it looks nice okay. i like these kinds of space beam games so that's my number six ex number six exploration all right my number six is a game that i've already played you've already talked about it today and that is combo fighter Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I played it at Gen Con, loved it. It was a, an instant sell for me. And I, I think it should be arriving in February. So I will look forward to playing it a lot. I love head-to-head -head two player games. This one's quick, it's fun, it's, it feels different. And I'm looking forward to my number six, getting to play it more, Combo Fighter. Yeah. I have a preview copy as well, so I got a preview copy. I did a, I did a preview of the game as well, so that's where I like. I really like it. I want to get this game, but you know, it's more like I already played it and I played the final copy as well. So, sure, yeah. All right, <coughs> I'm sorry. 
So let's go to number five. My number five is a game that I kickstarted as well. And <gasps> yes, but this one is this one has this kind of a unique, weird theme to it, and that's called So Long My World. Oh. So long, comma, my world. And this is a simultaneous action selection game. I don't know exactly how the mechanics work in this game, but I like how the theme is like, you know that this will be your final hours on Earth, you know, before you die, before the whole humanity dies, something like that. There's some kind of a <laughs> apocalypse coming. And, okay. and how you... How you it's, it's more like a spiritual, maybe philosophical game. Uh, where you are like, you will do the choices. Either you go the dark path or you go the warm or the light path and so on. How are you going to do? How are you going to uh, live your last moments on, on Earth? And just sounds weird, sounds very nice. And plus it has this simultaneous action selection. We peaked our outside part. <laughs> I like just that. Like I mean, <laughs> yeah. So why not? Simultaneous action selection game. Um, oh, and the art sounds, is also really nice. So my number sounds five. Sounds interesting. Yeah. So, so my number five, it. so long in my world. I think it's something that can suit your, you know, weird themes and games. Uh, oh, I collection. love weird themes and games. You know that. So, yeah, that's one I don't know anything about, but I'll be excited to try it it's or really at least take a look theme. at it at some point. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Good. All right. So um, my my number five is kind of a cheat. I wasn't able to put Aeon's End Legacy on this list. I didn't put it on because I've already played the whole thing through. My number uh, five, therefore, is Aeon's End New Age, which has uh, been announced and is going to come out later this year. Uh, you know I love Aeon's End. It's fast becoming one of my top ten games. I mean, I think it might even show it. if When I do my top hundred this year, it'll definitely be in the top 20, if not the top ten. I play yeah. it all the time. I love it. And more stuff for it, no matter what the more stuff is, <clears throat> is always going to be welcome. I already know that this is one that I'll love. So, number five, Aeon's End, New Age. Hmm. That's good. I, yeah, I haven't played Aeon's End, and I don't feel, I, I don't, I know nothing about the game, really. You know, it's fight, fantasy and stuff. So, I'm, I'm getting away from that kind of fantasy type games. Lately, I look and yet at you all want to of play these. Spirit Island. True that, <laughs> but Spirit Island for me is more like um, when I when I uh, think about the Spirit Island theme, it okay, feels fine. tribal. <laughs> it feels tribal and mythological more than fantasy. You know. I see. And I'm, um, I'm into mythology. You know that. All right. Fair so right. Uh, like this. Wrong with it. You can like what you like, but I. Yeah. I, you know. Anyway. Well. Going it's not like four? I'm not gonna play fantasy games. So, but uh, my number four is um, a game that's about tea estates and something like that. <laughs> I know I don't tea know much estates? about tea estates. Yeah, I, basically the game is called Alubari, a nice cup of tea. Oh yes, that game looks great. And yeah, that that game looks uh, really nice. It has kind of a Rondell or something like that in it as well, and railways, and kind of a you know that excited me. Like, huh, I'm it's into these. What? It's supposed to be a redoing of Snowdonia. Uh, no, it's it's the kind of a in the series of Snowdonia. Okay, it says All something right. like that. It's probably like another game, but in the same vibe, mm -hmm. a spiritual uh, feel to it. So, in this one, you are. Uh, you have your own tea states, you harvest them and you assist them and you, uh, you build the railroads as well and railways and blah, blah, whatever. Uh, just just sounds interesting. I don't know why. But Matagot, well, Matagot is one of those um, uh, publishers. That's why I'm also interested. Matagot is really cool publisher. So, But I just... Nice... It's probably economic resource management thing. Uh, tea growing, why not? Uh, something cool. I haven't played any tea growing games so far. <laughs> and also building railways while you grow tea. You know, like kind of a, that kind of a farming with the railways sounds sounds weird and really cool and nice. So I'm hoping for some great, you know, mechanical Euro game that has more theme and more juice to it. 
than just <laughs> usual dry hero game. I'm hoping yeah, for a good I, game. Alubari, number four. I, I hope it'll be good too. I got a promo for it in the in the advent calendar. This was this uh, hookah hookah tile for it. So I was like, what in the world is this game? And I'm uh, I'm curious to see how the whole game works. I like Snowdonia, and it, it's sort of in that pedigree. So I'm I'm curious about this game. All okay. right. So you're number four. My number four is another one that's from Kickstarter, and I sh uh, there there may be some more of those on this list. Uh, this is a game I like two to you know two player asymmetric games. That's sort of my my kryptonite. This is a game called Skulk Hollow. And I heard about this one. Yeah, is uh, one person is some sort of a forest guardian, and another person is a tribe of foxes that are attacking and trying to take down this large forest guardian and <laughs> it looks like an asymmetric you know two to two player game it looks like they'll play completely differently there's several different forest guardians you can use each with different yeah. abilities it's it's that's just you know that's exactly the kind of game i like and i think this one's going to be a lot of fun i am excited to to get it and i i think it's it's something related to the guy who did uh what's that uh role player i don't i don't know if it's the uh same kate guy. mateka yeah, yeah that, that, i don't know it, it, yeah so i th i know he was he was talking about it and so that's that's how i kind of got onto it he looks like he's one of the co-designers so and i like role player a lot and the artwork looks good and ah, i think it'll be fun skull hollow you're number four yes oh right let's go to number three and I just, when I, when I saw this game, I was like, hmm, that's something really interesting. And that might be something really not for me. <laughs> but as <laughs> so I told you, you I'm into space-themed games that use more of that science fiction, you know, more of science as itself. As opposed to... As opposed to space themed games that don't use science fiction, but I mean, like as opposed to games that are forex <laughs> forex uh, games that are like seven hours long and so on. But I, I'm not. Sure, I don't know how long will this one be because this one is called Beyond Humanity Colonies, and it says that this is a uh, you say it's discover in innovative combination of strategy and RPG with aug augmented reality. It's a competitive cooperative space colony builder simulation. So it might be <laughs> something really long and big and something really convoluted. But I mean, this one is because it, it says we give you an illusion of fully immersive cosmos around you and you have virtual citizens and you face some choices and you basically build up your colony. And there's a, a 3D render of the kind of, a, it's not a board, but there was a, kind of a huge miniature or, or a bunch of, you know, like a huge structure, your city or colony, and you're building this one up, and it has the app as well. And in this app, you probably have those virtual citizens who will also uh, vote for you as a politician, you know, and you will do your uh, dirty tricks, and you try to win the elections, uh, and just build up a really nice colony. So it just sounds so much fun. Like, Strategy and RPG uh, mixed into one means that it might have a lot of, you know, that kind of a feel of free choices, but a very strategic play itself. And the app, companion app as well. So sounds extremely nice. That's Beyond Humanity Colonies number three. All right. Well, next I'm going to have to give you tra PAX Transhumanity or something like that if you're going to play games like that. <laughs> yeah all right well my number nine number number three is <clears throat> yet another from my kickstarter list but this is one that i'm really excited about as opposed to the others that i'm also really excited about uh this is uh, one of my favorite games from uh, i guess 2017 was uh too many bones and this is by the same people this is uh cloud spire the artwork looks pretty good. It looks like it's sort of a head-to-head -head kind of a combat, running around fighting, tower defense maybe in their game. There are going to be lots of big chips and some dice, and it's going to be, I think it's going to be lots of fun. So 
I'm not sure I know much more about it other than that I already got everything from the Kickstarter, so I hope it's good. But, I mean, I paid for it. I haven't gotten it yet. Um, and this is from uh, Chip Theory Games. It's, it's a small independent company that is that continues to put out interesting and innovative ideas in games. Cloudspire, my number three. Yeah, I was looking at Cloudspire. It's in my wish list. Something really nice, you know, building up things as well. Why mm -hmm. not? Looks really cool. So um, let's go to number two. And my number two, without further ado, it's uh, Clank Legacy. Ah. It's, I, I'm not sure it will come out this year, but I think September. it will. September? Oh, okay. Because mm -hmm. I really like Clank. And, but I'm not into Clank. I'm, I'm not into legacy games that much, but as I started playing campaigns and things with my colleagues from work, I think like, hmm, I might still get the crowd to play Legacy. And after my first experience of Legacy, which was Betrayal Legacy, I know I haven't played Pandemic or something like that, you know, Legacy style, sadly, because I just don't have these resources, human resources, <laughs> usually. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Clank Legacy, Clank itself, a great deck building game with uh, Dungeon Crawl field treats. And Clank Legacy sound, sounds like deck builder with Legacy style, uh, with Legacy uh, mechanics. Yeah. Great. Number two, yeah. Clank Legacy. Sli slightly different theme, I think. It's in, in some sort of an IP, but it looks like it, it'll be fun. Yep, I'm excited about Clank Legacy as well. Yeah, yeah. Your mm, number two? My number two is... Clank Legacy. <clears throat> <laughs> no, that's, that's not a Kickstarter. My number two is uh, Batman Gotham City Chronicles. Huh. And... This okay. is uh, just, it's basically the Conan game redone in the Batman world. And I always enjoy Batman and is everything going on all right? I... Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. I seem, okay. Yeah. So I'm, I, I'm really excited for it. It looks like there will be way too many things, way too many pieces. Probably. I hope the rules are going to be better than the Conan game. But I, you know, I, I've always enjoyed, I mean, heavens, I dressed up as the Riddler on the cruise, so yeah. I'm obviously a, a fan of Batman villains. So I think this is one that I'm going to get a lot of fun out of, and I hope it comes out. And uh, anyway, my number two, Batman Gotham City Chronicles. Mm -hmm. I heard about this one. Heard some people are really excited about this one. I'm not into Batman theme that much. I like Batman, but, you know, nothing special. And this one seems to be, you know, like kind of a huge adventure game type thing. Yeah, it's a huge sort of a one versus many game. With no, that's you know, not for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, th yeah, and it's it's also I'm, it's probably going to be too sprawling, but I hope it's. Uh, and it seems like it has every Batman villain that ever made any cameo in there. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> they put just everything, everything in there. But I hope that they also put an, a lot of attention to detail in the, in it and that the rules are tight, and that the scenarios are fun, and that you get a nice Batman feel for it. So I'm going to give it a great big chance, and I hope it's going to be, it's not going to let me down. Because <laughs> it's my number two. Let's see what happens. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the final number, number one. And my number one is another game that I kickstarted. Uh, but I'm, uh, I might be more excited about the other games that are on my list that are on my list uh, if i get to know more about them but so far i know about this one the most because i was really hesitating if i should back this one in case or not and eventually i was like let's do it and that's tidal blades heroes of the reef is the same who um it's the same um, person who did the dream forest and um yeah, Green Forest is a really nice game. I like it very much. And this one seems I like I got the deluxe edition of Tidal Blades and which will have the you know the 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 the, the what was the the inserts what the, mm -hmm. the, the blah, 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 I don't know game I don't trays. remember game trays. Yes, thank you. The game trays inserts and some plastic things, extra things like will look really cool the arena and so on and you're basically doing the worker placements 
much more usual thing and set collection and stuff but you're also fighting monsters and you are then enhancing your dice or something like that you are upgrading your dice and you can upgrade them towards that side or towards that side or more peaceful or more aggressive side or whatever you so you have like a spread out tree of, uh, of evolution of your dice which sounds extremely fun this game looks amazing it has kind of a you know this kind of a tribal theme a little bit but fantasy and yeah i'm super excited about this one and cannot wait to get this game my deluxe copy that's title blades heroes of the reef my number one all right well i'm excited for it too i i have it coming through the kickstarter also the deluxe version we'll uh we'll have to see hopefully it's great uh moving on to my number one my number one is a crossover and probably not a surprise since you know me is clank legacy i'm uh, very excited about it and i have been excited since i heard it was coming i think this will be one of the best legacy games i think that that uh the game system will lend itself well to legacy and i hope that it uh, that it's handled with appropriate care i don't know much about acquisitions incorporated i don't the the the, the, the theme that's that's put onto it but i imagine it's uh it's going to be a lot of fun i but if it's just more clank if it's just an expansion to clank it's going to be great yeah and i mean it's legacy it's going to be even better so that's my number one clank legacy good so all right we are done with our uh top 10 most anticipated games of 2019 we talked less because <laughs> sorry because, because probably we don't, we don't know, know about the games that much we, we yeah. don't know they're, they're any good yeah it's like <laughs> this is a game about that one and that's it um so yeah this is it for this episode then so thank you for watching and don't forget that we did a basically cult of the past which is 2014 and before top 10 of these uh last week then yesterday we did a Cult of the Present, which is Top 10 Games of 2018. And today we did Cult of the Future as well. So you can look at all the past episodes as well, because they came out in a short period of time. And so you can compare what all the titles, what new titles, and what future titles we talk about. Of course, um, we will continue with the Beautiful Cast at some point in two or three weeks now i think so something like that maybe two weeks and i i don't know about the topics but you can you can write some topics uh then <laughs> so basically this is when we talk about summoner wars no <laughs> summoner wars will be banned and my second these will be banned from that as well okay <laughs> so, yeah number one games will be banned uh but yeah uh, i don't know exactly about the topic that's gonna come but hidden gems is one possibility, and write some other topics in the comments below. So well, we, we also about promised them. that engine building game uh, game list. A long oh yeah, time yeah, yeah. Sorry, yes, um, totally forgot about that one. We're gonna get do. Well, we're gonna get to months. that. <laughs> I mean, we're gonna get to that. We're, we're gonna build up to it. Yes, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna build it up at like at the end of the year. We're gonna show our <laughs> engines. All right. Anyway, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. It was Ilya and, and Kyle. And Kyle. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also look at the um, Instagram page and Twitter and Facebook page. I post some pictures there and maybe some other stuff, whatever. You can always find the information there as well and ask me questions and so on. So until. We meet again, or may we meet again? <laughs> okay, Thanks everyone well, in the chat will. as well. Yeah. All right. Have a good night. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. <laughs>